What's up, guys? This is Foss, uh, Professor Ginkgo, if you know me on Twitter. Um, I decided to do a video like this, just off the cuff, uh, no script, just as I talk about my transformation into being a VTuber. And I just wanted to talk about my journey because I feel it's interesting and I feel like if someone's new starting out, that they can look at this and figure out what they if they want to do it or not. And it's something that I can look at and a year or two and be like, wow, I changed. And so, yeah, I guess I'll start with how I got into, um, how I got into VTubers. Uh, it was one channel, definitely. I really, really, not one channel. Uh, one content creator, Blunzy, uh, I follow him on Twitter, and I just saw his clip, one of his, a clip one of his days, it was, uh, Sakura Miko clip the arc one, you know, the do 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 yeah. <laughs> that one. And I was, it was after like a rough day at work, and I sat down and I watched it. It was weird because I felt energized after that. It was just really, really weird. And uh, I wanted to know more about VTubers and I learned about, I mean, I knew about like Kizuna AI. Uh, I knew about, I accidentally discovered Monstery's channel before I even got into VTubers. Uh, I follow a lot of cover artists and uh, her day day do cover with Rika. I saw that one and I thought, wow, this is pretty good. I was like, oh, they're just a streamer, and I just didn't look at any of their videos. Um, and yeah, um, it wasn't until after I watched a couple of Kiryu Koko, uh, mainly because I was curious about how different it was in Japan compared to America, because she's both American and Japanese, so a lot of her talks, when she just talked about different culture, I found it really interesting, and I just kept on going further and further down the rabbit hole until, yeah. Uh, a VTuber now, but why I became a VTuber? Well, short answer, money. <laughs> uh, long answer, uh, I wanted to make YouTube for a while, uh, quite a bit actually, like about six years I want to say, maybe longer, and every time I'd look at a big content creator be like, man, that'd be amazing to do that, but I just... I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that. Because they have a they have a head start, they have all the stuff, I'll never be able to catch up to them. And so I followed a lot of like older people like Jay Witz, um he was the first YouTube subscriber I ever subscribed to. Uh Space Hamster Pro Jared, all those people, like really OG YouTubers. And I thought, well I can't get in. And so I just kind of watched and just went out throughout my life. But two things really changed me. The first one was Alpha Rat. He was he was new. He was fresh. He he was really had really good content. He was like not that much older than me. And I sat down and I was like, wow, that, I that could have been me. I, I missed the train there. And I thought about making it. And I thought about maybe making a content channel, do more content. But I never did. And I just kept on living my life. And then I saw Scott the Waz. And Scott the Waz is like. The exact same age as me same stuff and it was just like that was just a moment where I realized that man I missed it and in that moment I wanted to put myself and maybe make a, make a channel but I still kind of waited because I wasn't sure exactly where to start and had a concept um, I'd be like this something kind of like classic game theory and I talk about like uh, monsters from video games and TV shows, and say like, "Hey, how does this compare to the real world? How does this adaptation work?" And I would just talk about it. Uh, I never, never got off the ground frame ideas, and then, then I started thinking about VTubers, and I realized that, hey, there's a lot of VTubers around. It kind of reminded me of the classic days of YouTube, where there was a lot of different new channels, and you could just you could poke your head out and see, wow, there's so much stuff, and nothing was really settled. I mean, there's like the Hall Live channels, obviously, there's V Shoujo, but even then, like, you don't have, like, 
like the mainstream, I think, as like a lot of the standard channels on YouTube, you know? So I just decided I didn't want to, I don't want to like sit down on my ass and just say, oh, I'll do it eventually, I'll do it eventually. I decided to actually pick myself up and start and yeah, now I'm here. Um, so yeah, that's why I decided again to be too big. Now the other reason, well, my job sucks. I don't like my job. Uh, and uh, yeah, if I could make some money while um, doing what I love, that would be that'd be amazing. I think I would definitely love to do that if I got the opportunity. But again, nah, that's not likely. But that'd be fun. Um, so I guess next. Uh, do I have any history with content creation? Uh, kind of. Not YouTube, definitely not YouTube. Um, but I've been a writer for almost ugh, 10 years. Oof. I used to write just bad fanfiction, like just oof, horrible. Uh, and yeah, um, a lot of my fanfiction are kind of locked behind my Google Docs. You will never see a light of day. Um, I keep some of the older published ones out. Uh, just so I can look back and be like, wow, I've came, I've came a long way. And when I moved from fan fiction, uh, I decided to do role play. Um, uh, I've on Reddit. Uh, I feel like it's it's very different from Twitter role play for sure. Uh, Twitter role play, uh, there's, they typically take characters that are pre-existing and just kind of use them as their moves. Uh, muse, same as Tumblr. Um, that's not what I did and my friends did uh, what we did would we made our own OCs and we'd make backstories for them uh, in different settings uh, one of the ones that was really popular was Don't Laugh uh, Percy Jackson uh, Percy Jackson RP it's still up by the way oh Cam Half-Blood RP uh, and I still go on there from time to time and uh, it was fun making your OC and interacting with people and it kind of reminds me a bit of the VTubing community honestly uh, just so much cool characters, cool backstories, cool concepts in here. And at first, I wasn't all too good. Uh, I was actually pretty horrible. Um, but as time went on, I eventually wrote more and more, and I actually became a leader in some, uh, a lot of subs, actually. And it was pretty... My, my writing got a lot better, uh, and I just learned a lot, and uh, my writing's still not the best. I feel some people definitely, even through VTubers uh, like Zane, man, her rank's pretty good. Um, but uh, I feel writing in general, it's fun, and I feel like I've improved a lot. And I feel it's the same, um, same thing with content creation. If I compare what I am today to what I am tomorrow, who knows what um, I can improve? I've improved a lot even in this month alone, so I know that. I know that if I keep at it, I'll, I'll reach somewhere, I think. I just gotta keep pushing forward and make it. Uh, so yeah. It's community, by the way. I like, I like the community on Twitter. It's nice. Uh, it's very inclusive. I mean, it makes sense, because, I mean, like, trans people can, like, be who they are and not have to worry about being judged. Um, and you got people who just play their ideals and stuff, and people like me who just want to play an OC. And that's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, I'm not super big on the flirting. <laughs> it's not, not my cup of tea. It reminds me a bit of when my uh, uh, when Smut was written a lot with my friends. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan on it because I was like, eh. In terms of my thoughts, flirting is a little uncomfortable. Uh, it reminds me a bit of a couple content creators I used to follow that they kind of would flirt with a lot of their viewers and those revealed they would kind of like ask for news and stuff and I'm, I don't think anything that has happened in the VTube community if it has I haven't heard of it but I really hope that that never happens because I don't want that to happen but besides that I like it uh, I think the say so in the say so versus Lou that's weird well not weird but it's like you gotta pick a box am I am I pure as snow am I am I this pure little innocent cinnamon roll I'm out of this lewd, nasty boy, and oh man, look how sexy I am, ooh. I don't know. Like, if you're an idol, I 100% understand it, because, you know, they're trying to market them. They can market as, ooh, look at this pure girl, or ooh, look at this bad boy, wow, he fucks a lot. 
and uh, I don't feel like as content creators we really should put ourselves in a box. Um, you look at someone like, again, I'm gonna say um, Alpharad, he makes a, quite a bit of lewd jokes, but he's not really a lewd person himself, he likes innuendo. And I like, I feel like kind of the same way, like, I'll talk about anime titties more if my friends get me the mood. Henry, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think I'm gonna be able to focus the game because this monster is dump truck that Baka's ass. <laughs> True. Um, but uh, I won't, like, flirt with anyone. I will usually make suggestive comments. I might make an innuendo here and there just because it's funny. Um, but I feel like, in general, a lot of people take the say-so and lewd uh, labels and then they say, oh, you can't be one or the other. You have to, you have to pick. Are you lewd or are you say-so? And it's like, I don't know. I don't like how some people, some people get mad if you, if a say-so person does lewd. Or not even like does lewd, but makes a new win or something like that. I don't know. And if you look at a lot of YouTubers, like you look at Aki Rose, is she lewd or is she say-so? She's nice and she's cute, but she, she's talked about arrows, she talks about her dojins. Uh, Miko too. She's pretty pure, I'd say, but then you look at a lot of the stuff she does, and she loves Eros, like, loves Eros. And she, there's that one time where she was looking up Tifa's skirt in the Final Fantasy VII remake. So, I think even if the Japanese VTubers, which a lot of us model ourselves after, don't really apply in those boxes, so we really shouldn't be doing that to ourselves. But who knows, I'm just a month in, so maybe, maybe my mind will change, but at the moment, I am neither loot, I'm neither say so, I am just Foss. I have I have nothing against loot tubers or say so uh tubers if that's how they want to market their content, I 100 percent support it. Uh especially I'm glad that loot tubers do uh definitely mark their content. Because I mean like I don't I I would not want any kids to stumble on that, so you know what? More power to you. Uh I just wanna make it clear that I don't think that there should only be two ways to be a VTuber. Uh, speaking about that, idol culture. I don't like how a lot of, uh, I feel we put our unrealistic expectations on ourselves. Like, you don't look at a new YouTube channel and think, like, yo, oh, this guy has to be, like, similar to one of the high-end people, like Alpha Rad or Scott the Waz. You're not going to expect that from someone. So I don't know why... <laughs> A lot of us content creators, like, we put expectations that, oh, we gotta match Hollow Life, we gotta match some of these other people, and it's like, I don't know. I don't have that expectation for someone who's just starting out. I think a lot of it's self-imposed, and I feel like, as a community, we have to kind of uh, think about that, and maybe, like, tell people... I mean, there's been a push I've been seeing recently, where a lot of people have been like, you don't need to have a fancy debut, and you have a fancy avatar. All you gotta do is make content, and... I like that. And so, yeah, um, another thing about the community, the male VTuber thing. Oh, if I'm a male VTuber, I'm failing. And I don't, I don't see that as really right. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I, uh, I'm definitely guilty of going over and seeing, ooh, that's cute anime girl, I'm gonna follow them on Twitch. Uh, but I feel like at some point, I feel like it matters to content, you know? Like, I feel like if you don't got the content to back it up, then it's only going to get you so far. And you look at some of these really, really talented people that have sprung up, it's not only their avatar that's the reason that they've succeeded, it's just because that in general, they have amazing talents and they know how to use it. And I feel like just saying that, oh, I'm a male VTuber so I don't get much views, or oh, I'm not lewd so I'm not going to grow, I feel like that's kind of false. I feel like... I feel like there's definitely room for a big male VTuber. I definitely watch some of my friends. I feel like it's only a matter of time before a really big male VTuber that isn't talk and marry people who have had pre-existing like uh, stuff that someone's gonna someone's gonna crop up. I have a feeling, and I mean like it's not like a what's it called? It's not like it's a race either, right? I feel like. There's so many reasons, like, why I'm a viewer, I'm so low, I'm new, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say on camera, I'm not even sure how to speak to this mic right now. And I feel like those are all reasons to why I'm not growing, and I feel like if you blame yourself on something that you can't change, 
that you're just going to hit a wall and you're going to get frustrated. And I feel like we should focus on what we can change than rather what we can't. Eh, I guess that's just from my point of view. Uh, I have a disability, Asperger's Syndrome. Uh, it's basically mild autism. Uh, so I've kind of had that view where if I can't, if I can't make myself in this world, if I can't make myself, if I can't find a place, then I'm going to make it. And that's been something that, it's been a motto that I've said for years. And it's definitely that I'm running into this community with that thought is, hey, if there's no room for a male VTuber, then I'll pave the way. And if I, even if I'm not popular, but if someone else forgot something, great. And so, yeah, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's very, very, like, it's daunting for sure. Seeing a new person crop up and they have, like, so much views and so much follows. But at the same time, I feel like I look at that and I think, wow, I'm going to be like that one day. I just got to keep moving forward and I'll reach there eventually. And yeah, so that's my thoughts on male VTuber. Um, in six months, I'm going to make another one of these. Uh, we'll see what my thoughts on the community and how cool it is to be a VTuber by then. Um, by then, I definitely want to debut. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And uh, I'm currently working on a YouTube video on Diablos for Monster Hunter. Uh, please keep an eye out for that. Uh, I want to make like a lot of these uh, a lot more educational videos for sure. I'm hoping at least in six months I can get at least once a month, so maybe six videos. I want to do that. Um, and by then I want to I want to do more collabs as a because I have Aspers. I'm, I'm a little frightened from human interaction. I don't want to be too opposing, but I come off as a bit of aloof sometimes. And it's something that I really want to work for. Uh, there's a lot of people I want to collab with. I want to I want to talk to them. I want to make more collabs. So by then, my goals in a couple months are, one, I'm going to debut. Two, I'm going to make at least six educational videos. And three, I'm going to make more friends and collab more. See you guys in six months. I've been Foss.